All right, the time has come to go back to 1987 because our Rewind of the Week is Dirty Dancing. Oh my goodness gracious, starring Jennifer Grey and the late Patrick Swayze. Such an incredible movie, one of my personal favorites. And since we're in the beginning stages of summer, what a perfect time to talk about Dirty Dancing. Great summer movie. One of those movies that I think a lot of people can write off because they're like, it's called Dirty Dancing. What does that mean? Or like, it's a girl movie. No, it is an no. excellent capsule in time. I actually, just rewatching it, I always just assumed it took place in 1987 when the movie came out. I didn't know it was taking place in the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting fact. It, it, it explains why it's got such an amazing soundtrack because so yeah. many of those songs are pulled from the 60s. I personally love 60s music, so that's why this is one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. But yeah. if for some reason you guys need a little bit of a refresher, uh, Jennifer Grey plays a girl named Baby. Baby. That is not her real name, but that is what she was called for so many years of her life, and she just kind of went with it. Nobody puts Baby in a corner. And she and her wealthy family go to stay for a summer in the Catskills. And they're at this kind of like, I don't know, adult summer camp? Yeah. I never stayed, like I never summered anywhere. So that was always interesting for me. But one night when she's carrying a watermelon, she discovers that the staff members working at the lodge actually like to do a little dirty dancing on the side when they're not um, teaching the guests some proper merengues or the pachanga. You know what I didn't know about this until I watched the movies that made us on Netflix mm -hmm. was that Baby is kind of a real person. Producer Eleanor Bergstein was called Baby back in the day and went to the Catskills and this movie was kind of written based on like a fictionalized version of her youth. And what I love about Dirty Dancing is not only was it written by a woman, it was produced by Linda Gottlieb. So it was just a very female forward storyline that I love yeah. has kind of stood the test of time produced by women, written by women, with themes that were probably like, studios try to shut down left and right. Like no studio was like, yes, give me that abortion storyline. That's basically the reason that Baby gets involved in dancing in the first place. But the producers were like, no, this is integral to our story and it's in there and we stand. E.T. actually recently caught up with Jennifer Grey last month and she told us why Dirty Dancing is the perfect film to stream every summer. If you think about it, it's kind of the perfect time to watch a movie where you can feel like you're living vicariously through the characters. Maybe even like you're experiencing the dancing through them. You're feeling what it's like to crush on someone so hard you think your head might explode. What it's like to feel those big feelings that rock your world, whether it's for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Ash, I have a question for you. Hmm. Could you ever imagine Dirty Dancing without Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey in these two leading roles? No. I know, no. but it was almost not the case. So first off, Sarah Jessica Parker and Jennifer Grey were the two final picks for Baby. And then Billy Zane, yes, Titanic villain Billy Zane and Patrick Swayze were the final two picks for Johnny. But when they were doing the chemistry tests and they saw Billy Zane's dancing, let's just say that kind of took him out of the running. But then Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze almost didn't do the movie together because Jennifer actually couldn't stand Patrick. They didn't like each other. <laughs> they didn't like each other. They were on a previous movie together called Red Dawn and the two of them needed to have kind of a heart to heart in order to, to agree to do this movie together. It's funny because there's a fine line between love and hate and them not getting along on set translates to passion on screen. So it just seems like they want to like rip each other's clothes off. <laughs> which I love, which a lot of like, the thing is like the director of this movie was a documentary filmmaker. So there's a lot of things that happened on set of this movie that ended up making it into the film because the, the director was like, just roll on this, I love it. One of my favorite ones is the scene where he's standing behind her and he keeps making her laugh. And you see Patrick Swayze getting increasingly, increasingly frustrated. And the funnest fact about that is he was really, really annoyed because they were shooting at like midnight and he just wanted to go home and he was so over Jennifer Grey breaking and laughing during the scene and it is 100% authentic frustration. Definitely. And similar on that note is that in the amazing scene where they're like kind of goofing around and like crawling oh, on the floor. <laughs> oh, 
that was all improv. That was them just goofing around before the scene was starting. And then they decided to keep that in. Come here, lover boy. I love that. I was, when I was watching the movies that made us, one of my, like, the saddest things is when they go back and revisit the lake and it's dried up. It's all gone. One, two, three. Apparently when they were filming that scene where she's doing the iconic lift mm. in the water, it was freezing and they almost got like hypothermia. They were troopers. They ended up getting along by the end of the movie, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then speaking of troopers, Patrick Swayze, the entire movie was a trooper because he had had a pre-existing knee injury. He insisted on doing all of his own stunts, which maybe that wasn't the best case because when they're walking on the log and he's like, jumping up and down being like, oh, hope I don't fall. He actually did fall and he re-injured his knee and it delayed production for a little bit, so. Oh man, it's it's crazy watching this back because I think about people that would be cast in like Dirty Dancing today, which I know they actually have done this and tried to remake it, but Patrick Swayze was just such like a fine man. <laughs> Well, and E.T. actually caught up with Patrick back in 1987, and he is just as swoon-worthy as you would think. I'm blown away by the people that have seen it 80 to 150 times. No, I'm blown away by... I don't know, what, what can you say? You do your best work, you do the best work you can come up with as an actor, and you put, you put every inch of your soul and what you believe into your work. You, you can't do that movie and then live and wait for whether it's going to happen or not. I've done two more movies since Dirty Dancing, and it makes me proud, really, really proud that Dirty Dancing is affecting people like it, like it, like it is, because we were trying to just hit on a very simple human level, and it seems like it did that. And from that point of view, I am very proud. Patrick Swayze, swoon-worthy, but also like, kind of a stubborn man of conviction because he was offered six million to do the sequel and turned it down because he said, no sequels. No, no sequels. sequels for me. And then we got to respect nights. that. No sequels to Dirty Dancing, but there will be plenty more sequels of Stream Queens. So keep it locked with us on Twitter. Tweet us what you guys would want us to feature in Rewind of the Week next week. Yeah, do you have a Love Island MVP? Have you figured out HBO Max? Tweet us using the hashtag Stream Queens and we'll see you guys next time.